Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Generation 1 Transformers review. And welcome back to Patriot Prime Be Buggin'. My look at the Generation 1 Insecticon. And the Insecticon I'm going over in this video review is the one Insecticon that just freaked me out the most as a kid. 1985's Generation 1 Bombshell. Now Bombshell first appeared in Marvel Comics issue number 17 as just an enforcer for Decepticon Commander Lord Straxus. He really didn't do much in the comic other than just being in the background. But it wasn't until issue 21 that you realized how freaky this bug was. Bombshell's weapon of choice was the Cerebro Shell, a shell that he could inject into the brain of his victim to mind control them. And this was really presented very disturbing in issue 21 of the Marvel Comics series. Bombshell had by this time incorporated a tiny insect mode and he flew down to uh, shoot a Cerebro shell into the back of the neck of a engineer for Hoover Dam. But what was messed up about this was the artist actually showed the Cerebro shell traveling through the bloodstream up into the brain of the victim and seeing it clamp down and take control. That just messed me up. And to make it worse is when Bombshell was talking to Megatron about how it worked, he told Megatron, I could make this guy eat radioactive waste if I wanted to, and then demonstrated his powers by making the guy lick the grease off his feet. That was just, I don't know what it was, but that messed with me. And then in a issue of Transformers and G.I. Joe, Bombshell shot another Cerebro shell into the back of the head of a kid. And he ordered this kid to walk under the tracks of a vehicle to cause a distraction. So it was messed up. I mean, in the comic book, Bombshell, they made him messed up. Now, in the cartoon series, he wasn't really portrayed as such. He appeared with the other Decepticon Insecticons at the tail end of season one, where they were shown as they were la crash landed in a ship, I can't even talk, excuse me. They crash landed in a separate ship, different than the other Autobots and Decepticons, which is why they had their insect modes. And they were in a few different episodes. Bombshell used his Cerebro shells a couple times. Uh, I remember one time when he took control of Mirage, and just here and there, but he didn't really have any standout episodes. Bombshell is most noted for a conspiracy, an argument, if you will, within the Transformers community, thanks to his appearance in Transformers the movie. Bombshell really didn't appear in the movie except in one pivotal scene where Unicron transforms him into Cyclonus. Cyclonus, the warrior, and his armada. The problem with this scene is not only do you see Bombshell being transformed into Cyclonus, but Skywarp being transformed into another Cyclonus. So the big argument was, who is Cyclonus? Bombshell or Skywarp? Because throughout the rest of the series, you only see one Cyclonus opposed to this one two-second scene where you see two. So in my opinion, I think Bombshell is Cyclonus because... Cyclonus is in the foreground, but hey, what's your thoughts? Put it in the comments. So now, if you don't mind, let's get to reviewing the toy of 1985's Bombshell. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Bombshell's insect mode is that of a rhinoceros beetle, and unlike his deluxe Insecticon counterpart Barrage, who also turns into a rhinoceros beetle, Bombshell is a lot more robotic looking, but man does he look fantastic. I love the colors on this guy, the purple, the yellow, the black, even the translucent yellow there on top really work for this guy, and not to mention the chrome horn. That looks awesome. And the chrome horn is also Bombshell's only 
point of articulation in insect mode. It can go up or down. That's it. Bombshell also features wheels on his legs, and unlike Kickback, he actually rolls. But that's pretty much it for Bombshell in insect mode. Now let's get him transformed into robot mode. Transformation to robot mode is very simple. Simply take the figure, the insect legs, which all happen to be on one part, just fold those up. That will form the robot arms. Take the back section and flip around. These will form the robot legs. The horn, bend down like so, and then open up slightly, revealing the head. Bombshell does come with one accessory, this cool little chrome blaster. I love the looks of this. Go ahead and put that in his hand. And there you have Bombshell ready for battle. Robot mode looks fantastic. I love the head sculpt. It looks like a medieval knight, but it's really sunk down in the chest. You can position the beetle horn, or as it's known in this mode, his mortar cannon. You can position it all the way back. You can fold like so, or I always like to do mine at an angle, and that's usually how you see him in all the media. His articulation in this mode is the arms can do a full 360, though mine is a little tight, and the legs have a reverse knee bend, but that's due to transformation. There is a slight forward hip rotation, but that's all you're getting. You don't go all the way around. That's mainly for transformation as well. The translucent yellow here on the chest actually doubles as a cockpit, which carries over from the Diaclone line. You can't open that when he's in insect mode, but you can open it in robot mode. Back in the day, before he became a transformer, a Diaclone pilot would drive the vehicle and the robot, like a mech suit. And now for some size comparison, here is 1985's bombshell compared to Generation 1 Optimus Prime, his deluxe Insecticon counterpart Barrage, and his 1986 movie counterpart Cyclonus. Now this bombshell that I've went over in this review is the 2004 reissue from Japan. It is exactly like the 1985 original. And how do I know this? I had a 1985 original that I displayed in insect mode along with this guy. Unfortunately, my original, it had some bad stickers, it had some terrible chrome wear, so it really didn't look that good. But one day while I was cleaning my office, I accidentally knocked my 2004 bombshell in the floor and broke this section of his arm off. So what I ended up doing was Frankensteining my messed up G1 with my 2004 reissue. So what we have here is a 2004 bombshell with a 1985 arm. So there you go, guys. 1985 Generation 1 Bombshell. So, does a Generation 1 Bombshell belong in your collection? Without a doubt. This is a great-looking toy. The collars, the black, the purple, just scream Decepticon. Plus, if you have the other Insecticons, he is a must. They just work so well together. Plus, He's been reissued so many times, it should be fairly easy for you to find a complete one pretty cheap. You just want to make sure and watch for chrome wear there on the horn and the gun. So yeah, you see a bombshell, pick him up. You won't be sorry. And I want to thank you for stopping by and checking out my video. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to make sure you get notified when I upload new videos. I try to upload at least once or twice a week, just depends on my schedule. I also invite you to check out my show, The Sit Rep, where I interview other Transformer YouTubers. Guys, I appreciate you watching, and always, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hoorah! Hey, I really appreciate you guys stopping by my channel. Don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe. Also, check out some of my other videos that I've done on Generation 1 Transformers, Modern Era Transformers, and Toy Hacks Repro Label sets. Once again, this is Patriot Prime. Hoo-ah!